Well, it is often said that everything comes in threes. So in this video, let's apply the power of three to this Synology NAS and build the ultimate smart home server for Apple HomeKit. Hello and welcome to my channel, which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. And I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, there is something special about the number three. There are three goals in a hat trick, three primary colors, the three stooges, and three choices in a game of rock, paper, and scissors. So I wanted to apply the same principle to this Synology NAS by installing one, Homebridge, that brings HomeKit support where there is none, Two, scripted, get a high performance home video integration platform. Three, Zigbee to MQTT to get rid of those proprietary Zigbee hubs and build one of your own. And once you have these three awesome systems installed, you are guaranteed to have an effective and functional smart home server for Apple HomeKit for a good amount of time. So I will be using this Synology NAS DS218 Plus that's running on TSM7. For the Zigbee coordinator, I will be using this Sonoff Zigbee dongle plus that's connected to a USB extension. And for the camera integration, we will be using a Ycam version too. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. Now, before I go ahead and install those three awesome softwares, I want to quickly show you on what's currently running on this Synology NAS. All of my applications are installed within Docker and I also have all of these containers installed. At the same time, another application that installed is Plex Media Server. So I've also done a video on how to automate your movies whilst you play them using the Plex Media Server. And within these containers, I have AdGuard Home for web filtering, Heimdall that you can create this awesome web application dashboard and it makes it a lot more easier to access all of them. You'll also see that I've got Homer dashboard. It is a little bit advanced where you use HTML and CSS. I'm kind of learning, but you can build your own web application dashboard. From there, I have Portainer to make sure there's a graphical user interface to all of them. So this way I can delete images that are no longer required. And then from there, I also have transmission to download torrents and lastly, Watchtower. Now with Watchtower, it automatically updates all of my Docker containers without doing it manually. So if you're running Docker containers, make sure you always have Portainer and Watchtower installed. And just like that, that's a quick overview on what's currently installed on my Synology NAS. Now from here, let's go ahead and install Homebridge. Now one good thing with Homebridge, you have native application for DSM-7 and these are all of the supported models. So if you're running DSM-7, you have now a native application that runs Homebridge. So to install Homebridge, all you have to do is go to your server, access package center, go to settings, go to package sources and add this source, which is Homebridge. You can give it a name Homebridge and the location is synology.homebridge.io. Don't worry, I've left a link in the description to access all this information to create that package source. Once that's created, click on OK, click on OK and look for Homebridge and go ahead and now install it. Now, why is the Homebridge installing? What you want to do also, if you plan to install cameras and configure them using RTSP, you also want to make sure you want to add in two packages after this, which is FFmpeg and Git. So with Homebridge installed, if you go to access file station, you'll see that it's created a folder Homebridge and all of the files and folders are nested with it in. So now let's go ahead and click on Homebridge. It will show you the link as well. So let's click on this link, get started and create a default username and password. Open dashboard and just like that, you now have Homebridge running on your system. Now from here, what we can do is we can just quickly go and update anything that's pending. Now. Why this is getting updated, what we're gonna do next is go ahead and install Scripted to get the next level camera system platform on the Synology NAS. So now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and access the link on where those commands are. So I'm gonna access GitHub, 
go to repositories and don't worry, I've left the link in the description, tech with Eddie, and I have a link here with all of the commands. Now, just in case if you don't have the Portain and Watchtower installed, I have separate videos on it. If not, you can consult this link and you can copy these commands and execute the Docker containers. So from here, let's go ahead and install scripted. To do that, let's go ahead and open up terminal. Let's SSH into the server. From here, let's go ahead and create a root folder scripted within the Docker folder. Now, just in case if that location changes, you want to make sure you update it. So in my case, it's looking Docker within volume one. So if you want to know the location, all you have to do is open up file station, go to Docker, right click any folder, click on properties and you will get that location. From here, hit enter. You want to put in your password and then from there, you want to go ahead and install scripted for you. Give it a name called scripted, network is host, restart unless stopped, the location on where to store the files and always to select the latest image. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Now from here, let's go ahead and open up Portainer, containers, scripted, let's click on logs and it will tell you on which link it's actively running on. So in some cases, the port could be 11080. So let's go ahead and copy this link, paste, hit enter, show details, visit this website, and you have scripted installed. So let's go, go ahead and create a default username and password. Now, since most of this works on my local network, I always give a default admin admin. Click on management console. Now from here, we'll quickly add in one camera. To do that, we'll go to plugins, install two of them. One is RTSP, install. And we'll go ahead and install also HomeKit. Now with the latest update for scripted, HomeKit secured video is automatically enabled and doesn't show up as an option. So I'm gonna to go to plugins, go to RTSP, add a new device. I'm gonna, this is my son's room, VM, create. Now let's go and get an RTSP link. Now I use Notion to create a smart home wiki guide for my home. So just in case anything goes south, my wife can access this wiki and she can also find out the issue and solve it on home. It's a work in progress. Maybe I'll do a video in a couple of months time and show you how I built my own smart home Wikipedia. So I'm going to go to other configurations, take this username and password, and I'm going to put in the RTSP link. I'm going to click on save RTSP stream URL, then click on save. Then from there, I'm going to go to extensions, enable two extensions, which is the PAMDIF motion detection to enable the sensor in the camera as well as HomeKit. Now from here, I'm going to go to plugin, go to HomeKit and reload plugin. Now I'll go back to plugin, RTSP, select the camera. You'll see that now it's enabled. I will go now to HomeKit, go to pairing, scan this QR code and add it to Apple HomeKit. Just like that, we've got one camera configured. Don't worry about the update. Watchtower will go and update to the latest version in another 24 hours time. Now from here, let's go ahead and install Zigbee to MQTT. But before we go and install the Zigbee to MQTT Docker container, let's first go and install MQTT Docker container. So I'm going to access the link. I'm going to create three folders. Again, all nested within the Docker parent folder. I'm going to create a config folder. Last one is data. And now I'm just going to copy and download the default configuration file, which we will see in about a second. So I'm going to go to the server, refresh it, look for mosquito in config. And that's the configuration. Allow anonymous true, listen on 1183, and that's the configuration. Now from here, I'll just go ahead and run the installation to install the container. Name is MQTT, unless stopped. This is the port and this is the information where the information needs to be stored as well as the latest container. Hit enter. Now from here, I'm going to quickly access Portainer. I'm going to go to dashboard, go to containers. You see that MQTT is working. So to check if MQTT is working, let's go ahead and open up MQTT Explorer. So I'm going to put in the server information, 183, disable validate certificate, and I didn't apply any username and password. And let's go and hit connect. You'll see that it's all working now. So we have confirmation that MQTT is working on our network. Now from here, let's go ahead and install the Zigbee to MQTT Docker container. But before that, we want to make sure that the Synology NAS has identified this dongle. So I'm going to type ls space dev, you'll see that the TT by to USB zero represents this Zigbee dongle. Now, just in case you haven't enabled the USB port, I've done a dedicated video. Again, I've left a link in the description 
on how to enable the USB port so you can add in any Zigbee coordinator and you shouldn't have any issues. If you haven't done that, you can access that video. And in that same video, I also showed you how to install Zigbee to MQTT. If you already have it enabled, let's proceed further with the Zigbee to MQTT Docker installation. So from here, I'm gonna go now and create those additional folders. One is Zigbee to MQTT, then a data folder, download the configuration.yml file, update it, and then install the Docker container. So let's go ahead and create the primary folder within Docker, it's called Zigbee to MQTT. Within that, we'll install the data folder, then we'll download the configuration.yml file, hit enter. Now let's go ahead to the server, Let's go to the root folder. You'll see Zigbee to MQTT is installed. Now, one of the things I learned was configure the configuration of YML file first and then uh, run the Docker installation. So it makes it much more easier instead of going back and forth and correcting it. So access data, open up the configuration of YML file. First thing we want to do is update where the MQTT is installed, which is the same location that the Synology NAS. So I'm going to update that IP address. So it's dot eight six dot. I'm going to fill the USB port information as TT by USB 0 that we see here. If it's a decons, can't be too stick, it will be TT by ACM 0 and then you will need to keep the next line adapter decons. Since we're using Sonoff, we can delete this line and the front end, the port is 8083 because I know 8182 is already used and the host is the same place where Zigbee to MQTT is installed. So it's 86. Dot three, which is the IP address, the Synology, and the network key and PAN ID, I left it as generate. And just like that, you wanna go ahead, file, save, and close it. Now we can go ahead and install the Docker container. So we select this, copy, paste, and it will install. So Zigbee to MQTT, I've also mentioned the device serial, where the serial port is always, and the location where the files are. Now you should go to portainer, containers, you'll see that Zigbee to MQTT is installed. Let's click on the logs. Now, if you have filled the configuration of YML correctly, we should see no errors. And yes, there are no errors over here. So it confirms that the front end is working on the one that we had mentioned. So let's copy that, open up a new tab, paste, hit enter. Just like that, you've got Zigbee to MQTT installed. Now, to get all of these devices to Zigbee to MQTT to a home bridge, we go to home bridge, go to plugins, look for Zigbee to MQTT, hit install. We're going to put in the IP address where MQTT is installed, dot three, and no other information. Cancel all of that. Hit save. We're not going to run this as a child bridge. Hit save. And before we go and restart home bridge, I'm just gonna to go to home bridge settings, select the network interface to where it's running, 86.3, save, and MDNS server to Bonjour HAP, restart required. Give it a couple of seconds and you should see home bridge now connecting and working as intended. You have home bridge running, you have Zigbee doing connected to the MQTT server, and just like that, you have now the power of three installed in the Synology NAS where you can add in any home bridge plugin to go and add in any device into Apple HomeKit. Use a plethora of Zigbee devices into Zigbee to MQTT, import it to HomeBridge. And lastly, with Scripted, you can enable HomeKit secured video for any RTSP camera, Unify plugin, or even Rio Link cameras. And you have that one-stop shop devices going into Apple HomeKit. If you want to enable more devices, you want to check out this playlist for HomeBridge plugins. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and happy automation.